Hello everyone, this is the CS Revelation. Welcome to a new video on Java. Today we're going to focus on strings. Now, because there's no data type that can be used to create primitive variable that uh, can store a string value, uh, therefore it is useful to use objects of the string type. So string is a class that is uh, available for use in any Java program without the necessity of having to include an import statement at the top of the program. Now, let's uh, take a closer look at the process of creating uh, strings. Now in the Java heap memory, we have a string pool uh, in which all strings that are created uh, will be placed. Uh, so for example, the fo following line of code, string str1 equal apple, is trying to create a string variable called str1 and assign the value apple to it. So what's gonna happen here is that the JVM is going to check if the value apple is in the pool here. Uh, and if it is not, it will basically add the that string value to the pool uh, and then we will return a reference called str1 that's going to point at this uh, string value take a look at the second line of code here the second line of code is trying to also create a second variable called str2 and make it equal to apple so technically what's going to happen here is going to check if there is a string value apple in the string pool and if it is not it will create it but if it is it's simply going to return a reference that is going to point at that value uh, that is apple so the two lines of code here now uh, gave us two references str1 and str2 that point at the same value now the third line of code here which is string str3 uh, equal orange so we're going to do the same thing we're going to check if the value orange is in this pool and if it's not we'll add it to the pool and then we will return a reference str3 that's going to point at this value uh, there is a second way to create strings uh, and that is by using the new keyword and the constructor uh, of the string class. Uh, so string str4 equals new string apple is also going to create uh, a string variable and make it point at a string value. But the difference here is that uh, in with this method, we're not going to check the string pool if it has that value apple and make str reference point at it. It is actually going to create uh, a variable uh, that um, a variable that points at a value that is in the heap uh, section uh, and is not in the string pool. So directly on the heap. So str4 now points at apple. So uh, if we were to think about it, uh, this apple here is not the same as this apple. So two values that are in two different locations, one that is in the string pool and one is in the heap. So if we were to compare str4 and str1, for example, if they're equal, the answer is false. They are not equal because they do not point at the same value, even though the value is the same, apple is equal to apple, but physically this is not this. So therefore str4 and str1 don't point at the same value. They don't reference the same value. So let's take a look at str1 equals equals str1. Is str1 equal to str2? And the answer is true. That is because str1 and str2 both point at the same value, which is apple. Uh, str1 and str3 are they equal str1 and str3 so don't think of apple and orange actually think if they point at the same value so str1 and str3 point at two different values therefore they're not equal so this is false and the same thing we said earlier is that str1 equal str4 that's false that is, even though this, the value is apple here and apple here, but SDR1 is pointing at this apple value and SDR4 is pointing at this apple value. So technically they're not equal. Now uh, let's take a look at some Java code just to prove this. 
Okay, so let's create our variables. So the first one is a string um, str1, and it is equal to the value apple. Uh, so uh, the and then we're creating the second variable, which is string str2, and we're going to make it equal to uh, apple as well. And then we're creating a third variable that is str3. And we're going to this make this one equal to orange. And then we're going to create a fourth variable that is string str4. And we're going to make this equal to uh, apple as well. Uh, but actually, no, we're going to use the new keyword to instantiate this. So new uh, string class constructor and the value is apple. OK, so this creates four strings. And now let's just simply print out uh, the result of. So the result of SCR1. Uh, equals str2. So is that true? And if we run this, it should say true. And that is because str1 is pointing at Apple and str2 is also pointing at Apple in the string pool. Uh, let's also try to find out if str1 and str3. So str1 and str3. Uh, that should be false because they point at two different values. One is pointing at uh, apple and the other one is pointing at orange. Let's also find out uh, if uh, str1, which is equal to apple, uh, if it is equal to str4, which is also equal to apple, but one is in the heap and one is in the string pool. So it should be false, like we said earlier, and that's what we got here. It is false. Now, this is just a, um, you know, a brief description of the string variable type. Uh, and uh, I'm going to go uh, in detail uh, uh, to take a look at some of the functions that we use with strings. For example, uh, how do we extract a substring? Uh, how do we get the index of a certain character in a string? How do we get the length of a string? So we're going to explore on all of these uh, functions, uh, useful functions with strings. So stay tuned for the next video, uh, part two of this video. So I'll see you in the next one.